Good evening, everybody. I welcome all of you to today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, everybody. Uh, can anybody quickly type in a yes in the chat box if you can hear me and see all of us? If I'm audible and visible, I request you all to please type in a quick yes in the chat box. Oh, that's right. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Professor Sain. Good evening, Dachata. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. So we'll start this shortly. And uh, in the meanwhile, I request all of both of you to please mute yourself. Yeah. Okay. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, much awaited and much requested webinar on mass communication. Um, just a quick rules here. Uh, we are going to do this now. And uh, if you witness any audio or visual issues, please just reconnect or refresh or exit from the browser and join in again. And in case of any other visual issues, but if you can still hear us, I think we're good to go. Right uh, now, let's just go ahead and start this. And in the meanwhile, we also have the Mindler team live with us. So in case any one of you has any queries, please post it in the chat box and make sure you send to everybody so your queries gets answered. Now, uh, moving on, let me just go ahead and introduce our speakers for today. Professor Sen, uh, we welcome you. Professor Sen is an associate professor and assistant dean uh, she started her career with NDTV Profit as an output editor. She moved to the main news channel shortly thereafter, covering key beats like civil aviation, tech, and auto. She also anchored the breakfast news on NDTV 24-7. In 2011, she moved to England as NDTV's foreign correspondent, reported on key international issues. She also worked for CNN News 18 as associate business editor, reporting on macroeconomic political issues and anchoring prime time shows. She's now uh, with Jindal Global University in the School of Journalism and Communication. And surprisingly, she's also writing her first novel. We welcome you. We also have uh, everybody's favorite, Mr. Parikshit Dhanda with us, professionally trained from Harvard University. He's also one of the leading life coach, motivational speaker, and career coaches in the country. With over 20 years of experience, he has mentored and trained more than 2 million students across domains and regions. Understanding students' aspirations along with their aptitude and motivating them to achieve excellence has kept him busy for more than two decades. We welcome you too, sir. And um, I am Manchita. I am working as a career coach at Mindler. I have done my uh, graduation, post-graduation from the Delhi University and the elusive Indian Institute of Psychology and Research, Bangalore University. All right, to start with today's webinar, I would just uh, request all the professor, all the panelists to unmute themselves. OK, so as we all know that this modern age can be referred to as the okay. I think there's some intro. I, I think we'll have to stay muted and, 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 and as and when we need to talk, we'll, we'll come online, All right? right? Okay, we'll do that. Okay, the modern age can be referred to as the age of communication and the communication industry and technology has bloomed in the past few years. The world, because of advancement in the communication technology, has been unified as a whole beyond question. This is where mass communication and journalism has digged into the situation throwing up brilliant and unconventional career opportunities for aspiring students who are looking forward to work in the dynamic roles offered by the sector. Mass communication includes an integral component, which is journalism. And in today's webinar, both of our expert panelists will be talking about the same. Over to you, PD, sir, and I'll just mute myself. Wow, great. Thank you. Thank you, Anchita, um, for, for an introduction. Um, and, and I'm really, really uh, very pleased and happy that um, this is, uh, we've got a, can I, can I call you a celebrity? 
um, we've got a, a celebrity profile with us and also because she happens to be in the domain in a lot of roles so we are lucky to have her with us uh, by the way students just to remind you when we did this uh, a similar webinar on on media and communication maybe a few weeks back we had another we were lucky to have divakar here with us another uh, personality so so great um, you know when she calls me when anchita calls me an expert uh, please understand i'm not an expert on media and communication professor sain is there with us i will be talking about this as a sector and from a career perspective and professor sain will lead us um, as far as uh, um, you know the future and, and and whatever is happening and of course we would love to know more about her university the program and and what kind of profiles they are looking at so definitely we will we will keep bringing her in again and again professor sain um, great um, uh, thank you indebted to you for for spending some quality time with us great so when we talk about um media and communication uh, dear students number one let me let me let me um set the tone is that you know a lot of times you would have heard me talk about um the, the careers of the future i i talk about psychology i i also talk about law as a career of the future i also talk about design right and and as we talk about the the, the technologies whether it's machine learning artificial intelligence whatever please understand media and communication i would say is one of the careers of the future okay i would say the top 20 careers of the future why is because um you know when you talk about uh, let, let's let's set the context so at one point of time in life way back communication was a different animal uh, you had very very few channels it was basically uh, you know in the government control public control and and it was more of a dissemination platform that's it uh, information had to be given so so for example krishi darshan so because we had to disseminate the information to the to the kisans and the farmers right so we had certain channels we had newspapers and only few newspapers that's when media was there all right and then from there we moved to privatization and then we had a um, lot of private players media companies media houses and from there we moved to something called having 350 400 fm channels um uh, broadcasting and then of course international players coming in from there we moved to to a situation where each newspaper is available in an online publication where information requirement where we went into specializations so there is a finance specialist there is a sports specialist there is a media there is an entertainment specialist okay and there is a weather specialist environment specialist and so on and so forth now why i'm sharing this with you is also because the fact that this is getting into a specialized area also now you have another area okay now so before i talk about this i would also like to give you an idea as to where is it going the future the future is um the facebook the twitter the insta right so blogs um your 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 own uh, video logs now you've got khan academy you know professional ted talks so basically what are you doing you're also creating something called user generated content is this the future absolutely right so gone are those uh, i mean it's, it's, it's i'm not saying that the government's role in media is not there it's there but today content is not just in one language it's vernacular and there, what i'm trying to tell you is is the is that the spread and depth of media now why is because today like right now all of us are stuck in our homes all right now what can we do but imagine all of us are so connected with whatever is happening in the world or oh, at the click of a button we get to know what is happening across every city in the world every dimension every political new news whether it's black lives matter whether it's the police brutality in india i mean you know in a, in a certain sector whether it's the covid we get covid how many patients what is the rate what is the we get it every minute now that's the power of media what is media what is mass media it's a mass dissemination right and then from there let me take you through i'll i'll just be using the um the 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 presentation for a few minutes before i bring in uh, professor sain here all right let's look at few slides which we've created for you all right 
uh, great. Uh, uh, um, Anchita, can you move to the next slide, please? All right. Um, great. Oh, that's right. Now, this is where we are looking at the scale. We are talking about billions and billions of rupees and dollars being invested. And we are looking at this is where the entertainment industry is. Now you're talking about not only, um, oh, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll continue when we go to the slide. I mean, I have, there's just so much that we could talk about it. Let's, uh, don't worry, we'll be more than happy to share this, um, uh, uh, this presentation with you. Next, let's go further. Yeah. All right, this is the, now this is, we've straight away taken you to advertising and branding, filmmaking, editing, radio, jockey. It's the, it's just to show you the, the, the segment as to how diverse it is, right from news presenters to cameramen, to setting the stage, to creative. And also, I'm sorry, it is not mentioned here. It's the entire user experience, the UI, the UX, the multimedia specialist, the graphics guys, the writing people, Great. Next. Okay. What are few attributes which are required from a student's perspective? For example, um, they say uh, there are certain myths also attached to this career. But before that, I would um, before we get cracking on the myths, um, I would like to talk about um, very very important skill sets is curiosity inquisitiveness you need to be creative now creative doesn't mean only sketching and drawing creative means writing creative can mean can can take you to photography to production to editing creative everywhere is good communication skills now good communication skills my dear friends it's not just english it's any possible language all right you you have to go to your 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 um, your uh, tata skies or or whatever platforms you have at home you have to see the vernacular channels right so you need specialists in that area spontaneity knowledge and awareness and i for detail these are only few areas your your adversity quotient your ability to research patience your ability to understand um, facts verify them and 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 of course there is there is a lot of discussion about fake news that we talk about and the whatsapp university and whatever all right let's continue please next uh oh yes now the areas within mass communication so when we are talking about journalism we are talking about um uh, print and visual and of course that now the digital age video radio jockey copying uh, copy copywriting editing uh, I'm sorry, I said copying, okay? So so no plagiarism involved here. Copywriting, <laughs> editing, content writing, event management, public relations, advertising. Now, please understand when I am just talking about this, this is not just one part. These are all industries and verticals, okay? So therefore, when I talk about advertising, I'm talking about hundreds of careers involved in each domain, all right? Um, Public relations. Now, public relations, one from a public relations to think tank to also talking about corporate communication, corporate communication from every brand possible. So therefore, there are a lot of areas. I'm sorry uh, if you if we were to do a proper um, vertical and industry perspective, we would take hours and hours over here. Is photojournalism a potential risky job? Oh, well, um, uh, there is nothing called risky and safe careers anymore. Yeah, let's go further, uh, Anchita. Is sports journalism a stable career? Uh, my request to all of you, please understand every career is a stable career. If you have the necessary skill sets, if you are relevant, you have relevant skills and you can do well. But any career may not be a stable career if there is no fitment. All right. But today, in today's time and going forward, I doubt if you can call any career a safe career, which will not be um, impacted by uh, many other events. Social media, digital, stand-up comedy, YouTubing, blogging, wedding planning, we can go on and on. Is my request to all you young students who are listening to us and who will listen to Professor Sain is number one. Is okay, you're listening to us, you're looking at the presentation. My request is dig deep, search, read about media, read about communication, read about all of them, read blogs, read articles, understand what it takes to be um, a specialist in any one of these areas, what kind of courses that you need to do at the undergrad or postgrad. Okay, there used to be a time at one point of maybe 
20 years back. I mean, it's not that students don't look at it. Students would say, I'm not very sure of jumping into a media or a journalism program. So why not I do a sociology, psychology, English literature program? And maybe at the postgrad level, I would look at uh, media if I'm sure. I mean, I'm, I'm not joking. This used to be. I'm not saying it isn't today. But today, if you are sure, if you're clear, it's better to jump in straight after 12. Why lose out on those three years? And then your choice, if you want to straight away run for masters or most importantly, get work experience skill to understand what this industry is all about. Let's go further, please, Anchita. Oh, of course, then there are a lot of um, uh, uh, undergrad programs like you have BJMC, BMM, BA, BJ, a Bachelor of Journalism, or you could do journalism and mass communication. For this, you will have to go to the universities where you're applying. You need to see what is the curriculum, what is the course called, what do they teach in those three year, four year programs, um, or you're going for uh, a certificate or a diploma program or a degree program, you need to figure out. These are few recruiters, okay? Uh, recruiters, when we talk about, look at the possibilities, magazines, media houses, radio stations, broadcast companies, newspapers, news channels, and I'm sure this is not done. Can we have more, please? Um, next slide. Oh, yeah, PR agencies, uh, digital marketing, advertising agencies, so many possibilities and opportunities. Okay, uh, uh, Anchita, thank you so much. I'd like to bring Professor Sain in here, please. Professor Sain. Uh, I, I could only talk about few things. Um, I mean, I mean, it's like, you know how media has moved from one to the mid. And now you're talking about Netflix, Prime videos. And, and, and you're talking about uh, now, of course, there are a lot of other platforms. Reddit is coming in. Twitch is, 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 is doing, um, you know. So there is so much happening in the world today. Can you also please throw some light as to where you see media used to be and where it has come? We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Sananda. Uh, I think one of the things, I think you gave an incredible overview of the kind of opportunities that are available to young people today when it comes to communications as a space. I would like to add one quick component to that because I think with any kind of communication strategy, there's one thing that everyone who aspires to become a successful communicator must understand. And that is at the heart of it, communications is storytelling. What you're doing is telling stories to an audience. And if the audience doesn't want to listen, it will get up and walk away. So you have to learn how to tell a story and you have to learn who you are telling that story to. That is one thing that doesn't change. It was true when it was print. It was true when it was radio. It was true when it was television broadcast. And it is true today in digital. How those stories operate, how those stories are told, the way those stories are framed, those may change. But fundamentally, storytelling is still part of it. Uh, you know, we, when I started working in uh, 2005 with NDTV, uh, we, were, we were using tapes. Uh, we would go shoot, run back to office, it would take about an hour to an hour and a half for us to load a tape. And then we would sit down to edit, sort of old school edit machines, splicing tape together. Within two years of that, by 2007, we had moved to using what are called P2 chips. Uh, today, NDTV almost entirely shoots on mobile phones, uh, except for long form documentaries for which you need slightly better camera quality. Uh, this is a transformation that took place in less than 15 years. Uh, so this is a very, very short period. When I, when I started working, you had mobile phones, but you certainly didn't have 4G or 5G, which is very, very quickly going to be something we're all using. Uh, so it, it wasn't as if you could WhatsApp your, your alerts to your bosses or your editors. You would have to quite literally call them old school and have them put it up. So in a very short period, things have changed seismically, which means that the way we're approaching communications as a landscape. Uh, it's something that's fundamentally deeply conflicted at the moment. Uh, we are looking at two major questions and I'll keep coming back to them in the course of this discussion. The first thing and the most important thing is how do you monetize the internet? Uh, all of you are on the internet and, uh, the, and I, I do this as well. We want things for free. We have an expectation that if it's on the internet, it will be available for free. 
Uh, the problem is that, that you can't run an industry for free. You need some kind of financial model. And I think the next, this was, um, and I completely correctly pointed out the age of information, the next decade, the decade you guys will be working in and you guys will be operationalizing really uh, is going to be the decade when we try and understand how this aspect affects each and every one of our lives. So that's the one big question in communications you will be looking at because you will be looking at how to manage brands on. So today it's Instagram, today it's Snapchat, today it's TikTok. Well, not right now. But till last week, it was TikTok. Um, in two years from now, five years from now, there will be a host of new platforms and new technologies. And you will have to learn how to adapt to every single one of them in a way that my predecessors certainly didn't have to. And my generation did, but not as drastically as yours will. So understanding platforms and understanding who, how to respond to them and how storytelling changes on them and how they're going to be monetized in different ways, how you're going to get ad revenues from some of them, uh, how you're going to be putting up different images, different words, uh, all of that is going to be critical in what you do in the next five years and going ahead. So that's, I think, the most important thing at the moment. Uh, the second uh, most important thing is... Uh, that you are going to be looking at new kinds of professions emerging within this space. Today, um, I think that Mr. Dunn has laid out a series of professions which uh, are, are absolutely correct and they've been there for the last decade. Uh, Ten years from now, there will be new professions which we can't even imagine at the moment. Social media manager wasn't a thing five years ago. Now, there isn't a single company in the world that can afford not to have a social media manager. So think about where that could go and what that could mean for you. And the way that you communicate is going to change radically. So I think to start this conversation out, I'd like to just say one thing, which is we don't know what the future is going to be like. We can prepare you as far as possible with the tools that don't change and give you at least a sense of the new tools that are coming up or where we will be five 10 or 15 years from now, no one knows. The world is changing in very new, exciting ways, and you guys will be at the vanguard of it. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I have uh, another question, uh, Professor Sain, is that um, now when we are talking about, uh, yes, we understand that, that the areas are going to change, and it's not just um, you know, a specialist in language. It could be a sound engineer. It could be UI and UX experts. It could be designers. It could be, it could be uh, cameramen, photography. It, there are so many other careers which, which kind of, um, it's, it's, like, it's almost like, can I call media and, and communication almost like an interdisciplinary area? I mean, because there are so many other disciplines that come to interact within the same industry. Um, so my question is, as a young student, say I'm an 11th or a 12th class student, and I want to make a career in media, communication, or going forward journalism or whatever, or maybe looking at digital media, social media, and so on. Uh, what are a few tips that you would like to give me from a research perspective or from a perspective of that? What are a few things I need to have within me or what are a few areas, skills that I need to inculcate? Please, if you could just talk a bit about that, we'll be, we'll be very happy. Absolutely. I think in communications, the first two skills, and these, these are skills that is that will serve you incredibly well, no matter which kind of communication space you go into, whether that's PR, uh, copcom, journalism, advertising, the two skills that you absolutely have to get is a broad knowledge of the world around you and how it intersects. A What, what we call a broad-based sense of a liberal arts education, uh, history, politics, economics, uh, all of these are, you cannot do without them. Uh, let me just give you an example. I, I used to be a news anchor for many, many years. And on a daily basis, I'd be doing live news with news feeds coming in from all over the place. And 
I had to be able to talk about them for a minimum of two to three minutes. And I cannot tell you how long two to three minutes feel when you don't know anything about the subject. You have to know enough to be able to work with any information being thrown at you. You must be able to make connections. If there's news coming in about, for example, a plane crash taking place in Ahmedabad, you have to not know how a plane works. You can't not know that. So this very, very broad based information, read constantly, ask questions constantly. Anybody who will sit down and talk to you, ask them questions. That is the most important thing you can do. There is no substitute for that. You will need to be able to walk in front of a bicycle maker, a, a cold drink maker, a high end computer chip maker and be able to give a pitch and talk knowledgeably about their industry. If you're in corporate communications or in public relations, you have to be able to do it. There is no, there's no way that you can get away in a communication space without knowing a little bit about everything under the sun. Uh, secondly, uh, you have to be able to, to be able to work on your feet. So if you're put on, if you're really be put on the back foot, you need to be able to come up with something immediately on the spot, roll with different kinds of people, make connections with the different kind of people. You have to get people to trust you. At the end of the day, communication is about getting people to trust you. And that's really not a skill set we can teach in a classroom. That's a skill set you can only learn out on the field. So today's, uh, so when I've seen a lot of questions here, which are uh, asking about whether you can do a liberal arts degree and go into journalism, you absolutely can. I, I did. I, my background is in English literature and, and popular culture. I have no formal journalism training. But 2005 was a different time and a different era. Today, uh, you, We've, it's much, much more difficult to make that transition because you're going up against people who already have field experience, which is something you will not get in a liberal arts degree. Uh, one of the key features of journalism training today, communications training today, is to be able to go out in the field and make contact with people of different spaces, classes, languages, and learn how to tell their stories on the ground. So you, that I think is, is a truly critical part. So those two I would su suspect are communications, educations, which will not change ever. Thank you so much, Professor Sen. I think uh, you've given a lot of important points. Yes. Yeah, one second, Anchita, because this is a very important point which, which Professor Stain has touched and I want to uh, share this with students. If you heard uh, Professor Sen talk about her experience. It's like, imagine from a news reader who gets news every few minutes and you are online and you're talking to the this thing. So it could be from a crash, it could be sports news, it could be breaking news, it could be anywhere. So what is she trying to convey? She's trying to convey, so if, if, if I hear her correctly, please understand when she talked about liberal arts also, it's not just knowledge of history politics, sports, business. Of course, there are specializations, right? Um, when I come in, I need to know about weather, about geography, definitely when I'm presenting that. But what about a newsreader here? Okay, am I a specialist newsreader? No, I'm, I'm not a specialist newsreader. I'm just reading, I'm reading news. But, but purely from an investigative journalism also, what is it that you need? Your ability to probe, your ability to research, your ability to not take what's what's obvious, your ability to to deep dive. Okay, so therefore, um, your connect, your connect with your sources, your reading, and your reading also eclectic reading, my dear friends, eclectic, which is you need to read a lot. It's like your your ability to grasp fundamentals, your ability to connect with people, to do interviews, to to record observations, and then you. So basically, when you're talking to them. You are, in a way, talking to walking and talking encyclopedias. Now, of course, it takes years of practice, but can we start doing that? Absolutely. Is it? And, and, and most of, please understand what you'll be taught in the courses. You will have to practice it on the ground level. And only then you will, like, like for example, my favorite line is that we can teach you all about law, but the real art is when you practice. 
right? Your drafting skills over a period of time, you will hone those skills. Sports, a very different thing to, to play online video games, but the real game on the on the floor is different. So thank you, uh, Professor Sain. I just wanted to bring that point over to you, Anchi. Yes, I think uh, students and everybody who's joined us, you are able to understand that both the speakers are trying to put a lot of emphasis and Professor Sain rightly said that there are certain soft skills along with our knowledge that we are supposed to have and we will inculcate that over a period of time when we move towards this career. Professor Sain also, uh, and even to you Parishit sir, in the recent year when we talked about, we talk about the advent of internet, we talk about technologies have brought out many significant changes in the media landscape, right? And this has kind of created a shift in the consumption of me print media as people are consuming news, as you rightly mentioned, through e-readers, through uh, smartphones and personal e electronic devices. And this is something which is very, very different and opposed to the traditional formats of newspapers, especially during this lockdown. So uh, what do you have to say in terms of the skill set that is required one? And how do we go ahead and uh, deal with these changes? What is the kind of preparation that we need in order to look at these particular things? Right. Um, I'll, I'll give a quick overview about, and then I'll, I'll pass it on to Mr. Nanda. Uh, we currently, as I mentioned earlier, we currently find ourselves at a point of massive flux and change. Uh, in 20. 13, 14, around 2013 or 14, the then editor of, uh, of The Guardian, uh, Alan Russ Bridger, wrote a book about whether, asked the question about whether it was the death of journalism. The answer was no, no, it's not. Uh, we've had these scares before. Every time there's a new technology, there's always a fear that it will lead to some kind of seismic change which will wipe everything out. I think it's relatively safe to say that that won't happen. Uh, the question, however, is how will it change? How will it alter? Well, I can give you a fairly real, a sort of realistic reassurance about what the situation is in India right now. Again, let me reiterate, I do not know what it will be like in five years. So if you're in class 10, this is not a guarantee. Uh, it, but as of 2020, uh, the way the the way that India still operates is we have a very, very high newspaper subscription among the highest in the world. Uh, there are several reasons for this, but uh, the most obvious ones is actually our Hindi, I, I don't know if any of you ever used Hindi news websites, but they're very, very, very badly designed. Uh, the reason, there, there is a reason for that. That's, that's not the fault of the designers. The reason is that the way website design has evolved so far, it has been very uh, Anglo and Romanian languages centric. So to visualize uh, design for a non-romantic, uh, non-romantic, non-Anglo language is something that is still being dealt with. So you've got uh, you've got a bunch of Hindi websites. You've got Z News as a website. Lots of people have websites, including um, you know smaller places like what the Wire, which only which is web only, but. Uh, if you've ever compared English websites to Hindi websites, English websites are infinitely more intuitive to use than the Hindi ones, uh, the apps, the websites, all of them. Uh, that's, of course, I assume something that's going to change in the next couple of years. There's a lot of work going on on design. And so right now, most people who are reading vernacular news are still reading it on their actual print copies. When we talk about digital media in India, we are talking about two things. We are talking about English news. The other is that we're talking about streaming platforms, talking about video. And even when it comes to video, we are not comparable to any of the big developed countries. Uh, the last set of data, which I think comes out in 2018, saw the seismic rise in the number of mobile phone users in India. But it also made it clear that a significant number of those mobile phone users are not smartphone users. So streaming for them is still a problem. So you've got, uh, I mean, if, given the size of this country, we're still, you know, 200 million people who are using digital forms of various kinds. But 200 million is a, it, it, it's a drop in the ocean, really, for India. So radio and newspapers 
if you move outside your, your metro cities and maybe outside your tier two cities. Tier three and lower, everyone is using either newspapers, radios, or old school phones. This is, of course, why fake news is such a problem, because this is why WhatsApp forwards very often become the first source of information that these people encounter. Uh, but of course, that's a whole different set of issues, and I won't go into that. So, if, But if you are going into English news of any kind, or I assume, as I said, in five years, uh, vernacular news will be at that level as well. The penetration of, uh, uh, of digital media will have increased, if we are going by current rates, probably to seven or 800 million at that point. Uh, then what we are looking at is an ability to be able to shoot, write, and edit on a phone or a similar device simultaneously, you will be a one person bureau. You will use, and not only will you be writing a uh, copy, which is uh, the copy you will be making a video of, for example, yes, but you will be writing in a minimum of five formats. You will be tweeting. You will be putting photographs up with uh, on Instagram with captions. You will be putting up short videos in various spaces. And you will be having copy for your website, which will go up immediately. You will be having copy for your print edition, which will go the next day. So you have to be equipped to be able to write, shoot, and edit for a minimum of three different forms. And that's, and that's the preparation that you have to be ready for. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, Anchita, if I could just uh, add to I mean, an elaborate understanding which uh, Professor Singh gave us on, on, on the way things are changing, um, where she talked about vernacular and, of course, uh, the, the, the print media and, and also what are the, the revolutions uh, or, or the, the revolution that's happening, taking place. I'd also like to share here, uh, students, please uh, understand that um, yesterday when when you, you saw the example, I mean, of course, uh, as Professor Singh talked about WhatsApp um, uh, forwards yesterday when it was decided that um, um, that the that the NEET and J exams have been postponed. I think within about eight or nine minutes of that being reported, it was all over. I could see just about everyone sending. Of course, it started trending on Twitter also. Right now, that's the speed of um, content all right so when we are talking about user generated content okay we are talking about personal blogs personal writing people are are, are writing up uh, 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 i heard someone ask about youtubing blogging uh, and and then of course we've been talking about our personal channels i also talked about khan and ted academy um uh, you know uh, uh, ted uh, bringing in professional videos here uh, the, the another thing which I want to talk about before we go back to uh, Professor Sain and Anjita, I would like to you to ask uh, Professor Sain questions about her university and what about the program that she's, uh, you know, they're conducting there. Uh, just a couple of quick uh, pointers, students, is if you are preparing for any uh, program, uh, mass communication uh, media or journalism program, please understand there are possibilities. What are the possibilities? Number one, they could test you. Uh, they could do an aptitude test, all right? Usually, the aptitude test could involve something like uh, definitely English, uh, okay, because that's that's important. Uh, along with English, there is a possibility they could check your logical reasoning, critical reasoning. They could check your English grammar, vocabulary, and stuff. Uh, some bit, not maths, some bit of analytical reasoning. Uh, maybe some, uh, you know, few institutes may have a, a short, very, very basic test, right? Uh, there are difficult tests also. There are um, a very um, a phenomenal institutions. Uh, there are universities. So, for example, you know about Allahabad University, Delhi University, Banaras Hindu University, and, and there's so many conventional programs that still exist and people go there. People still go and do their programs. But plus, the revolution is also being brought in by private universities. And um, uh, Professor Sain happens to represent one of the leading universities in this area. Of course, we'll talk about that. So number one is aptitude. Second is there could be interviews, whether it's a group discussion format or a group interview or a one-on-one -on -one interview. And they could be looking at your profile, 
they could be looking at what you've done so maybe when students ask me what can i do in class 11th and 12th is there is there any research article is there anything that you publish is there any you you have a blog of your own you're interested you've done any internship with a media house or internship online offline internship there are so many things that you could do you uh, you you indulge in public speaking or you look at muns or you look at um, what you call debating poet poetry recitation contest whatever uh, next is can you come back can you come into this field from a particular stream you need to have humanities no you could be a commerce graduate i mean you could be from a commerce background a science background or arts background is there any special um, subjects that you need to have no all right great if you have few subjects that that interest you for example history um political science if those are the areas of your interest if literature is an area of interest great but can i say that someone who's looking at um uh, science can he not or he or she not participate in this career absolutely you can all right um so just be prepared let's let's take up uh, take up more questions um, with professor Yes, thank you so much, sir, and thank you so much, Professor Sen. That was really, uh, I think that was really a good chance for students to understand from a very live experience of yours and how can we take that into consideration for moving ahead. I just had some questions with respect to, okay, uh, when I talk about OP Jindal uh, School of Journalism, what are the sounds of specializations or the electives that you offer within the course? When we say that we want to wanting to move ahead for a very generalized course, what is it that we are moving ahead and looking at that? So uh, the course that we offer currently at uh, we're we're a very young uh, very young school uh, our first batch graduated this year. Uh, the way we imagined the school when we when we started it was a journalism and media studies school. Uh, so the focus really was not on the other aspects of mass communications. While uh, I think a lot of the skills we teach is almost a running joke in journalism uh, and in PR. I've heard this joke from both sides that they're the dark sides of each other. Uh, so a lot of the skills absolutely translate. If you learn how to write copy, you do it for both sides. If you learn how to create a video, you do it for both sides. Um, advertising is not something that we look at at all. It is a completely different field, a completely different uh, kind of specialization, skill sets uh, that you require. We, at the moment, we don't, uh, our course isn't designed to include that. The focus is essentially a broad-based liberal arts education. So our first year really is only the social sciences. So again, as you were saying, for anyone who's coming in from the sciences, for example, or from commerce, uh, we give you a, we, we start from the very beginning. We are like, this is, this is the political science you need to know. This is the history you need to know. This is the sociology, the economics, the geography. We have a lot of conversation on climate change. Can't do it without having an understanding of geography in today's world. All of that is, that's the first year. Uh, we'll get to the skills from the second year onwards. Uh, and the skills include radio, which is basically all audio related. I know when I say radio, it sounds really sort of old school or it sounds really FM, but it, today really it includes things like podcasts, if, you're, if you've got a SoundCloud account. Uh, radio includes understanding all of those uh, technologies as well. And we do very much bring that into our course. Uh, television, of course, uh, we've got a studio. Uh, which, um, I mean, I, I, I did design the studio, so I'm going to be a little sort of uh, proud of that, but uh, this, which allows you to understand uh, absolutely in, quite literally in the spotlight, what it's like to work in a studio setting, right from camera to news presentation, to running uh, what is called a production control room, which is uh, directing what goes on air at what point in time. So we've got, video production essentially laid out and again video production isn't just necessarily television uh pretty much every digital uh space today has a video component so uh understanding video production uh is is critical even if you do want to go into digital media of any kind uh, the other thing uh that we have is because obi jindal has a law school it has a uh, governance and public policy school it has we basically currently have nine schools expanding to 10 by next year we offer what are called cross-listed electives 
which means you can take electives on any subject that interests you. Because again, as I said, you don't really need a specialization to be a communicator. You need as broad a base as possible. So we encourage taking electives. Do you, are you interested in psychology? By all means, take an elective in psychology. Are you interested in art? Art journalism is a massive field. If you want to work on art, then by all means, take an elective in art. Crime, there we've got courses in forensics that you can take from our cross-listed electives. We've got, and so from the second year onwards, it is compulsory for students to take a cross-listed elective every semester. So for four years, you will take a minimum of four and a maximum of six cross-listed electives, depending on how you choose to balance out uh, the choices you're making in your uh, selections of courses. And, the, and I think that's the most important part of this degree. It's liberal arts and it's interdisciplinary and it's skills. Those are the three things that we wanted to, well, I'm a part of the founding faculty and when we discussed curriculum, all of us agreed that these were the three things that we wanted to bring together because anybody going into any kind of communication space would benefit from it. I've, I'm just very quickly going to, there's been a few questions here which I've so it's kind of caught my eye uh, where people have asked about um, whether they can become filmmakers after studying journalism or whether they can go into film studies. Uh, media studies also includes cultural studies. So we do have uh, courses. I, I teach it myself. As I said, my background is in popular, my academic background is in popular culture. I teach uh, courses on film criticism. Uh, but for a specialized film career, you need to go get a master's degree in filmmaking. That's not something that any communications course at the undergraduate level will teach you. Uh, I have a lot of friends who've done it and done it very successfully. So that option is available, but it's not something that you'd be getting here, but you would be getting a sense of genre and you'd be getting a sense of, again, storytelling and a basic introduction to the technologies. That's insightful. I think that's a lot of information. Um, so it brings me to my next question. You also mentioned a little bit on the uh, studio here. So I would just want to understand how can students at OP Jindal University use the best infrastructure provided to them, especially the studio that you've designed? Right. Uh, so uh, unfortunately for us, much like for everyone else in the world, uh, the coronavirus is, uh, has put a bit of a spanner in the works. But we, so we have two studios, one's a television studio, one's a, a, a radio studio, and both of them are entirely operational. We had just managed to get a license which would have allowed us to start our own radio station. Sadly, of course, that is not going to happen until we reopen in person. Uh, but that's one of the things we have planned because there is nothing like hands-on training. Once students have the responsibility of running their own station and they're making their own content and understanding what it's like in real time, that's the only way that they're going to learn. We can have simulated productions forever and it's not going to work. It has to be in real time. Uh, we're planning to do something similar. Uh, we're going to have a streaming uh, website uh, on YouTube fairly soon as well, where uh, our students will be programming out of the studio, will be conducting interviews, uh, will be giving news bulletins. All of that is in the, is in the pipeline and hopefully we'll start from next semester on. That's actually something that all of us are looking at. Um, considering that and uh, moving ahead for the program, so communication and uh, internships are a very important aspect here. You mentioned that before in terms of getting a skill set and understanding the technologies these days. So how does the university promote that culture? Is there any kind of help that students get in terms of getting the internships? Absolutely. So. Uh, we have uh, we have well, the two parts to it. The first part is the official uh, career development cell that the university runs. And the career development cell has a list of internships which are circulated among the students and the students are encouraged to apply and the university sets it up. They also do training programs on a regular basis with the students to make their, sort of their CVs um, appealing for the particular place that they're applying for an internship to, um, training them through interview processes, things like that. But we also have a more informal system. Uh, 
in our department right now, uh, I would say 70% of us are from the industry itself, from various parts of the industry, either television or from print or from digital. And we all have a lot of friends in the, in the industry. We all know people in different media organizations. And if uh, a student feels that they want to work with one specific place, which is not listed in the career, uh, career cell, uh, we encourage students to come to us and have a conversation about whether they can work with a very specific uh, person or organization. And if we can, we try uh, to set that up for them. And we found that to be very successful uh, because uh, when we find that students have come to us with that kind of information, it shows a passion that we really want to encourage. If they've come to me specifically say, I want to work with the news laundry, for example. And we've had a couple of students who've interned there and I, and I say, okay, why? Why do you want to work for news laundry? And they'll say, well, you know, I, I, I'm really interested in the way that they do media analysis. I followed them. These are people I like. I'm like, okay, you're coming to me with a background and a passion that I want to help encourage. And I think that media, I think that you would benefit from news laundry and news laundry would also benefit from you. So we then make that happen as far as possible. It is a more informal procedure, but it's something that we make very clear to our students right at the beginning, that we are always there to help them out if we find that they are showing that the kind of interest that we want to encourage. Absolutely. And I think all the students, okay. all the students who are asking us about that this is being a very competitive field and they have to go ahead and you know prove themselves, so I think uh, that's what Professor Sen is trying to say, that you should have that fire in your belly to move forward and show that interest to us. And in terms of the university, I have just one more question. That what are the international collaborations that the university can facilitate for students? I read about the, the student exchange program and the summer school programs that you have. So if you could just shed some light on that. Sure. So currently we have uh, one uh, summer program uh, based out of the journalism school. Uh, we have a summer pro program on the future of global news, which takes place at Berkeley. Uh, our dean right now, uh, he used to be the dean at uh, the Berkeley School of Journalism. So uh, he he knows everybody. I mean, it's home tough for him. And so he set up this absolutely incredible program with, uh, with the, the top journalists from the Bay Area, lawyers talking about free speech, uh, pretty much... It, people working on different kinds of sort of cutting edge technology, people coming in from Facebook, people coming in from Google. Uh, so not just news producers themselves, but also people looking at the future of information in general. Uh, so that's that's our flagship program. Again, sadly, uh, it couldn't happen this year because uh, the coronavirus, but we have run it very successfully for two years and we hope to resume it from next year as well. We also have uh, currently three um, inter three uh, semester exchange programs. Uh, we have one with um, uh, the University of Tel Aviv. We have one in Istanbul and we have one in Vietnam. And we've had students go and uh, for, for the entire semester and it's been it's been one. It's been a wonderful exposure for them. We're also building up a few more, uh, including a couple in the U.S. Um, and a couple in the U.K. We also have, and this one's very exciting because it's just come through, and I'm I'm delighted to share it. Uh, for and I can see a lot of people here who are interested in sports. What is essentially a double major in sports journalism at Barcelona University. So uh, you do uh, two years with us and then your third year with them specializing in sports journalism in Barcelona. If you're a football fan, I cannot imagine anything being cooler. Uh, so you do your, um, your third year there and you get a degree from both. So that's just come through and it's super exciting and we're going to do, uh, we're going to have more come up over time, of course. Anchita, one Thank second. I, I'd just like to add something here to what Professor Sen talked about. Uh, dear students, <coughs> when you look at a university, and I was listening to her very aptly and carefully, um, when you look at a university, see see what are the universities, you know, what is the new age universities that are offering you? Um, so they're talking about studios where you could do your practical stuff, that's one. Second is collaborations, international collaborations. Now, you had somebody, someone coming from Berkeley, 
Berkeley School of Information. Now, supposing if you're saying Berkeley School of Media, then you're talking about people who have worked at Facebook, Google. So you're talking about industry and academia collaboration. You're also talking about internships. You're talking about college you know, credit transfers. You're talking about collaborations of that sort. And please understand, you're talking about cutting edge technology. So this is what you need to look at. You need to look at these important attributes in a university. The other point that I would like to talk about is please understand who are we talking about? We are not talking about millennials anymore. We are talking about the centennials. Therefore, please understand the way you take to gadgets, the way you interact with technology. Please understand a lot of us in 70s, 80s or 90s when we were all growing up, we couldn't do that. So therefore, your generation is absolutely at the right juncture with the revolution or the disruption that's happening in these careers. Over to you, Anjita. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Professor Sen. And uh, in terms of that, uh, you also spoke about how uh, during this time, it's becoming a little difficult for all the internship exchange programs happening. Um, what is it? What's the plan ahead in terms of continuing education for mass communication and journalism for the academic year 2020 and 2021? How are we looking at this? Well, we would like to teach classes in person. Best case scenario, in September, we're in campus. We teach classes in person. By next semester, we can go out, we can shoot, we can do all the things that we are used to doing. Unfortunately, that is not something I can guarantee. I don't think anyone can at this point. Uh, my, let me give you the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is that everything will be online at least till next January. Okay, um, fingers crossed that doesn't happen, but let's just prepare ourselves. Uh, so we've, we've taught online now for a semester. And I have to let you know about, I'll just very briefly about how it works. Uh, we have had long conversations about what works best. And we found that for media and communications training, what works best is what's called asynchronous teaching. Now, there are two kinds of teaching. One is synchronous, and synchronous is what we do in the classroom, which is you're sitting in a classroom, I'm sitting in a classroom, I tell you things, you respond to me, and then we go our separate ways. Unfortunately, online, uh, synchronous classrooms just don't work. Uh, people absorb information differently. I mean, we've been talking now for about an hour and I'm fairly sure there are people who are starting to tune out. Uh, now imagine this, but with really heavy duty classes. So uh, asynchronous teaching basically means we, we try and give you information in different ways, which are not bound to a timetable so that you can access them at your convenience. Uh, and then set up essentially a discussion format which allows you to have an engagement with me, the teacher, uh, in a way that's less formalized than a classroom lecture setting. So that is probably what we will go ahead with. Now, what about the technical parts, which is, of course, much more complicated, because if you can't leave the house, you're not going to be able to shoot. If you can't access a studio, you're not going to be able to do studio work. All of this continues to be true. Uh, we have managed to source uh, open source softwares, which allows us to teach you editing at home. We have managed to source uh, open source uh, softwares, which allows you to do data visualization at home. Unfortunately, the only thing that we cannot replicate is the student. It can't be done. And that is just a hit that unfortunately we will have to take for, for the year. Uh, dear students, one very important point again, um, what uh, Professor Sain talked about is you see how you know, a lot of people ask me these questions, especially students. Are the Indian universities geared to, to deal with COVID? Let me tell you, uh, of course, I've been talking to a lot of universities, but after listening to Professor Sain, I am again reassuring you that all the Indian universities are ready uh, to take over, number one. Number two, uh, whether it's synchronous learning or asynchronous learning, but she talked about uh, where she explained to you the difference. Synchronous is when all of us will get up in the morning, do our classes the same time, all of us will be present. Asynchronous is when they will give you 
the, the for example the tapes of, of you know the program the videos which you will listen to you will read you will go through and then they will set up another session which will be synchronous learning where the coach is going to be with you breakaway sessions or breakout sessions or whatever that's one second please understand what she talked about they've already sourced where you could be taught editing sitting at home so talk about technology software so please understand they are prepared universities are prepared to support you in case of any eventuality in case covid becomes it's it's a difficult area it's very unpredictable none of us know if they are ready to 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 adopt you as early as september when the programs could start right yeah over to you anchita thank you so much uh, professor sen that was insightful any other question that we we need to ask professor sen i think uh, ma'am has already covered most of the things so oh great then i'm coming up with one uh, one thing and then i would want to hand it over oh, no no let me ask uh, uh, of course uh, as as a professor you need should need to i mean you need to have the last word but here i need to end so i need to thank students before that i want your last comments for you know for these young students any other comment that you would like to or any suggestion that you would like to make to these students who are following us they are the future i have spent 3 years teaching young people and i am constantly impressed by how much more focused and knowledgeable they were than i was at that age uh, they are clued on they're smart they're savvy they're innovators we need these people in communications right now we need people who are passionate intense intelligent savvy and are ready to take on the world that and i see that in these kids these are the kids who are out on the streets these are the kids who are making twitter justice happen these are the people who are changing the world through instagram they are already communicators we're just going to help them tweak it a little bit so if they're interested in communications i cannot think of a generation more prepared thank you thank you so much that was brilliant report young students young students please understand what professor sen talked about if there is going to be any change in the country in the world it is you so whether it talks about lawyers who fight for human rights or judicial activism whether it's the it's it's the the generation which is you or uh, who 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 instantly reaches out across the world for any travesty any justice wherever um so so you are the generation that she talks about she says she feels that you are a very smart generation very savvy and we want young people like you to make the difference okay next my last uh, uh, point that i want to share is that we are very happy at mindlaw we are bringing these discussions of these webinars to you where we get lucky where we get um, stalwarts from the industry to come and have a discussion with you we will continue to to be with you every week we'll come up with uh, more and more interactive sessions and at any point of time you want to reach out to us you want to talk to our coaches you want to address your career concerns or for example the postponement you all of you know that clat has gone online neat and um, uh j has been postponed uh even the alet has has pushed its date so so we will keep coming back to you please stay in touch write to us at any point of time and uh, we'll be sharing uh, professor sain's email id if she allows us you can write to her she'll be more than happy to support you write to us if you have any questions any concern we'll be more than happy to link you uh with professor sain and the op general university thank you so much professor sain it's been wonderful having you here and i'm 100% sure, sure the students and and all the other members uh, who heard you uh, would have felt good about it anchita over to you professor sain you you mute and i would just like to say that uh, mr sir is absolutely correct please share my email id i would be glad to help out in any way that i can thank you so much both of you thank you so much to both the panelists and thank you so much for the mind team as well as all the participants who've joined us today and if you have any queries which uh, we kind of missed out please write to us at hello@mindler.com and uh, we'll be happy to assist you with anything going forward thank you so much everybody Thank you